Hello and welcome back to another segment of the newly titled The OVO Show, starring Ovia Gofu, the star of the show. Me, I'm your host, Serenity Douglas. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas football page. And we love the support you guys are giving us. So full discretion, I didn't necessarily know how to approach this interview today, you know? And I think that it comes from, obviously because it was a tough loss and me also being an athlete, seeing the way, you know, some athletes are dragged by the media and a lot of them, especially in college, a lot of them aren't even interviewed after losses besides just the coach, you know? So this is new. And I didn't really know how to go about it because I'm never in a situation where I want to offend the athlete or bring up things that make them uncomfortable because, you know, it's kind of like, this is supposed to be fun for you guys. And I knew, I know you guys are dreading this. (laughs) I mean, based off of pretty much just you being one of the only ones who texted me back, (laughs) I understand that this could be dreading. Mm -hmm. So just for starters, tell me how weird it is to you having to do an interview, this is kind of like NFL level right now. Uh, I mean, for me, I just feel that uh, losses is part of the game. Uh, I mean, I've taken losses before. Uh, you definitely don't want them, um, especially, you know, the way it happened last Saturday. But um, it's part of the game. And for me, it's more like, what happened, what caused us to lose, and, you know, what what can we do, you know, so it doesn't happen again. So, I mean, like, doing an interview after a loss is not really, like, you know, that affected towards me, but um, it's just more, you know, moving on and going to the next game and, you know, improving from what happened last game. How do you move on? How do you cope? Like, you personally. Me personally, I mean, um, it's not easy, especially like, I think for me, the hardest part was experiencing it during the game. Because that's, that's, that's exactly like when we're losing, it's during the game. So I feel like for me, like when it was hard on me was during the game, but after the game, it's more like, well, it happened, um, and again, like, we just have to, you know, figure out what happened, what made it to be that way, why the result was that way, and then, you know, get back to the drawing boards. That's kind of like how I approach it. And that's kind of how I've been approaching it so far. You know, I mean, it's only Monday, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is only Monday. Yeah. But going back to the drawing boards, like you said, what does that mean for you? What specifically is on your drawing board? So for me, um, I want to say after the game, I probably watched the film about three times on Sunday, three, like three times. It's like really- you just separately or with the team? Yeah, me just separately. I watched the film probably about three times and just looked at it over and over again, trying to figure out, okay, this is where I went wrong. This is where we went wrong. This is what we have to improve. And this is what, and also this is what we did right. This is what we have to keep doing right. And then, I want to say for me, the next thing I do is uh, talk to my coach, Mm -hmm. see what he has to say. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, we go in the next morning, like today, and we talk to it, we talk about it as a team. And then it's it's, it's really good here because um, we just move on and we move on to Rice and our next opponent. And we would we and Coach Sark really emphasized on like not letting this loss define our season and it won't. And I think it was just a, a bad day for us. And we definitely will improve. For sure. Yeah. I'm glad Sark was able to say those encouraging words to you guys because uh-huh. that's what I was gonna try to touch on. Like, you know, what was the locker room talk? What was the atmosphere even on the plane ride back home? Uh I mean, of course, on the plane ride home, it was quiet. It was late at night, so uh, and we just lost. So it wasn't it wasn't the best. It was awkward. 
it wasn't the best. Um, but uh, I will say this morning, though, uh, I think it's very important, especially for a new head coach and for a new, um, you know, a new team that it's important to, you know, see what our head coach is going to say about this. You know, some of the head coaches will drag it. Some head coaches would, you know, change their approach based on, you know, how the game went. But, you know, Sark was very consistent. And um, Sark basically said that, you know, we're not going to let this loss define us. Mm-hmm. Just going to move on. And uh, we're going we're gonna to see what we did wrong, though. We're definitely going to critique what we did wrong. But uh, we're just going to move on and, uh, you know, get better. Pretty much it. So it was good. It was encouraging. And just like that, like, we moved on to Rice and we started getting committed for Rice. I mean, that's all you really can do. Like, what's the point of dwelling on it? You guys have games every single weekend. Exactly. And you literally have to bounce back. Every single play that you guys have to do, I think that's where it's different from, like, a track meet. Like, I have a bad race. And then it's usually over. Like, I might have a race after that, but it's usually just over. Yeah. But for you guys, y'all have, like, 10 seconds to be really pissed off about the fact that you didn't tackle whoever, and now you're back on the line again. Exactly. Like, shake it off. And it's crazy because that's that's the same mentality of the win, too, that we have to have. It has to be a 24-hour, you know, memory because if we win, we still got a team to play next week. Yeah. And, we can't be, and we can't drag that one along just like we can't drag the loss along. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. I yeah. agree. When I was like reflecting on the interviews that I was doing with you guys and, you know, how I would approach these, I was like, they kind of didn't gloat too much after game one anyway. You know, even when I mentioned how Arkansas played in their game one and how it wasn't really up to their abilities – and I know you especially were one of the ones who were like, well, you take that with a grain of salt because everybody is still going to come and they're going to play hard. And that's exactly what Arkansas did come to do. Exactly. So it seemed like you guys did show a level of maturity when it comes to that. You know, it was not. Yeah, I think that it was more so like a level of maturity. But did you guys have practice today? Just out of yeah, we had practice today. And how did that go? Practice went good. I'm telling you, this, this, we just went right back to uh, what we right do. Right back to it? Right back to the schedule, yeah. Uh, That's, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I was asking because <laughs> when I <laughs> – when we do bad, uh-huh. like Saturday, that means usually after a track meet, our Mondays will not be that difficult because we just ran Saturday. Okay. But when we do bad, that Monday, <laughs> yeah, 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 just have the trash cans ready because it's coming up. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> going to be difficult. Like our going back to the drawing board is literally just like reps on reps on reps. reps, on reps. Oh, but okay. I did see that. I don't think Sark is going to panic, you know? Mm-mm. He has too much experience, too. So, I mean, you know, he's probably lost a lot of games in the past. So. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, now that you guys are basically just going to go back to the drawing board, it's just a loss. Mm-hmm. What are some things that Ovi is going to fix going into game three? Like, when you watched the film... What was something that was like, that was absolutely horrendous, or I need to work on that? What 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 were they? Um, I want to say that for me, I had a few mental errors just in terms of the play itself. You know, executing the call that was given, and then really, I would say that uh, one thing that I'm going to improve on for sure is just playing with a little lower pad level, more lower pad level, which gives me a better base. You know, to strike. Lower pad level. Yeah. You have to explain that to me. What does that mean? So lower pad level. So um, basically, the low is a saying that the low man always wins. And basically, like, when you low knees bent and you have more power, rather than you know being straight up or more uh, straight back. And for me, like there was there was times in the film, not too many times, but it was times um, 
in a game where, you know, I didn't have that low pad level, maybe because of fatigue or maybe because, you know, I'm thinking about the play too much that I'm not thinking. So more just technique wise and uh, just play with better technique. And uh, there was one play that I missed the tackle that uh, went for a touchdown. So just getting back to, uh, you know, basic tackling, you know, yeah. I learned <laughs> when I was 12. So just doing yeah. And then uh, I think I think for me that's pretty much that's pretty much what you know, those things I wrote down my notes from the game. Do you need like a certain level of aggression? Like you said, like there were a couple of tackles that you missed. Do you think that it's because that level of aggression and that grit just was not there that game? No, I think more it was more like leverage. I think uh, for the defense, it was just really leverage. It's not really that. Um, they caught us, like, it's not like, you know, it's not something that like, oh, we haven't seen this before. It was just more that like, sometimes we were playing maybe too aggressive. So we're over the top too much and they just cut it back. So it was more leverage, I feel like. Uh, a lot a lot to do with fits and, um, you know, where the linebacker is supposed to be in, in comparison to where the D-line is supposed to be. Where the, and it's supposed to be in comparison where the corner is supposed to be. So just like a lot of leverage issues. And and I think that like, honestly, while watching the film, like if we could have solved those leverage issues like earlier, like the score wouldn't have been as, as much as they did. They wouldn't have ran it up as much as they did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So those things you mentioned, like getting the leverage, the D-line versus the linemen, things like that, those seem like things that could have been worked on during fall camp, you know? And the fact that we're going through these things in game two, was it possibly overlooked in practice or was it just Arkansas just got the best of us? Uh, I mean, I don't think that it was overlooked. I think it was just more like, again, like just a, a bad game really. Yeah. Like something we just probably just like, you know, didn't really like, you know, like really perform at our best at. And yeah, we've been working through it all fall camp. But just just like how you said, uh, after our Monday, you wrap it out, you wrap it out, you wrap it out. That's the same way we get better. So we just go have to go back and wrap it out. And just it's just more of attention to detail rather than us overlooking it. It's just more like, you know, just more like, okay, being on the details, being more focused. But it's definitely not something that we overlook. And it's definitely not something that we go into the game and we're like, oh, man, our leverage is off or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, it's just more like, you know, we just got to pay more attention to it. And Arkansas took advantage of it. Really, yeah. as y'all saw, it's just Arkansas took advantage of it. Yeah. So we've been playing with great leverage all fall camp throughout the first game. And this is the first game where we saw that, okay. And it's more like as a defense as a whole, like and we saw that, all right, as a defense as a whole, if this happens, we clearly see that we have opponents that can take advantage of it. And that's exactly what Arkansas did. Yeah, understandable. Well, on another note, you know, I like to talk about the atmosphere with you, especially uh -huh. because you're a transfer. And you were telling me about how your Michigan game, like versus Notre Dame or Notre Dame versus Stanford, like the energy was always like huge. So how was it this time? Like going through this game, even me watching the game on the TV, it sounded so loud. I was like, is this like a national championship? <laughs> but yeah. how was it to you on the field? No, no, definitely. Um, the atmosphere was definitely there. Like the, the stadium was packed. Uh, I remember coming out and just looking around, like from the top row to the bottom, like it was packed. Uh, it was very loud. Like you can tell that, like okay, this is a this is a rivalry game. You can tell that Arkansas is definitely here right now. And um, I enjoyed it though. I enjoyed it. Uh, the atmosphere was amazing. You know, those rivalry games kind of get you a little extra pumped. Um, but, uh, I liked it and it was even crazier because I think I knew how big this game was to Arkansas 
after the game because they just rushed the field and it was hard for us to even get back to our locker rooms. And, and, and like, I think like that's the beauty of it. Um, when I was at Notre Dame, we played Clemson and our students rushed the field after we beat Clemson. And it just kind of like, you know, brought back a little bit of some memories, but like um, the atmosphere was amazing. Uh, we just hope, we just wish that, you know, the outcome favored um, in our direction though. That was the only thing. Yeah. 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 And that's understandable. How do you deal with the media that comes behind it? The media, I say the media, like I'm not the media now, but that's why I asked, like, as a, I still feel like I'm an athlete, <laughs> but how do you deal with it? The negative comments? Uh, I think that's the hardest part of the game. But um, to me, I feel that, you know, you just, you just can't pay attention to it really, you know, it's kind of like, okay, I see it, but you know, we got to move on. Like, and it's so much easier said than done. And you is. know it. <laughs> it, it is. It is. And, it, and that's why I said it's the hardest part of it because like, okay. that's, that's something like, you know, especially like if a comment or tweet or something like that really hits home, like that's the hardest part. But I think that, um, us being athletes, that's kind of like, you know, what makes this stronger week. Like, you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna take, you know, what the media says to heart, or, you know, we're gonna see it and just like, you know, just focus on ourselves. And I think like, that's, that's the hardest part for real. And I think for me, it's just more like, you kind of expect it though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lost big. I mean, you expect it, but I kind of look at it like, I would say my first two years running at Texas, I had that same mentality. You know, it was just kind of like, well, as athletes, we push past it and we just don't read the comments and we don't take it to heart. But then I kind of looked at it like, why can we not be treated with the same respect that we have to give the fans, you know? <laughs> So then I started to see a lot of my role models um, snapping back mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit. And I was kind of like, yeah, because at the end of the day, it will be like these Twitter trolls. And I'm like, it's not like we're 19 years old. <laughs> you would not say one, well, you wouldn't say it to our face. Uh -huh. And <laughs> it would just be a different story. So like I said, look, you're much better than me. <laughs> and I think that a lot of you guys are handling it with a lot of grace and a lot of maturity. No, and that helps out a lot. And it's and it's also like, you know, you know, we play football at the University of Texas. Everybody's watching. And it's like, again, like I said, like, you know, if we're not doing well, it's almost expected that, you know, the media is gonna react negatively. And to be honest, like something with me is that I just feel that, you know. I think like what helps me cope better with, you know, negative reaction for the media is just knowing that they have no clue what I'm going through. <laughs> I know. So it's kind of like just ignorance. Right. So that's kind of how I think of it too. <laughs> I had to know this. Is, no, I like that. I like that a lot. Just kind of reading it and just kind of brushing it off. I'm like, who's yeah. this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. We got a lot of those. I literally, we had a lot of those. I was like, <laughs> that's what you decided to no, like send like, out. It's, it's, it's some stuff I see, and I just like it's sometimes it's just it's so bad that you laugh. Like it's you like, do. I kind of want to do, I don't know, I'm not sure if you've seen them. What late night show it is, maybe a Jimmy Kimmel, I'm not sure. But where they read mean tweets, like uh -huh. I really want to do like some segments, not, not trying to put you guys through any trauma, but uh -huh. I kind of want to read like the mean tweets because what? <laughs> a lot of people don't think that athletes get that. Uh -huh. But when we like lighten it, comment back. And then that's when all, all of the real Texas fans are kind of like, who, like, who is this guy? No, so I, I, I think we're going to, I think we're going to get into that. <laughs> the mean tweets or something some of y'all's dms i really want to get into that and just expose these people <laughs> expose these people a little bit <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs>
Yeah, understandable. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, thank you for even taking out the time to meet oh, with me. For sure. Because I know it can be difficult oh. to just readjust. But like I said, you guys are handling it, especially you with a lot of maturity. And being pissed off about it is understandable, you know? And not wanting to talk, I get it. Not wanting to feed into the media, I understand that too. But the fact that you're even having this open discussion, just, it means a lot. And I really feel like, I really hope people can appreciate it because you guys don't have to. (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But it's the OVO show. Yeah. (laughs) And you are the star of the OVO show. And we have game three, Rice. So that's all, that's all we need. And I'm pretty sure it's an 11 o'clock game. I think it's a night game. It's a night game. Maybe tech is the 11 a.m. game. Yeah. Well, regardless on it being a night game, that's good because it won't be as hot. (laughs) But please like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bless Texas Football YouTube page. We really appreciate the support. We appreciate the hate comments too. And come one, come all. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you.